Hi, I'm MJ with iFixit, and today we are going to take an up-close and personal look at Google's new Nexus 7 in our Nexus 7 Teardown Roundup. I'm going to be honest with you. When Google first announced the Nexus 7, I didn't get that giddy feeling in my stomach the way I usually do at the thought of tearing down another gadget. I'm kind of over tablets. They always promise to be the next big thing, and inevitably, they failed to deliver. So I was both surprised and delighted when our teardown revealed that not only does the Nexus 7 live up to its Kindle Fire Killer reputation, but it also satisfies some of our desires on the repair front as well. So let's take a closer look at what sets the Nexus 7 apart from its competition. This is the Nexus 7, and it is Google's first entrance into the tablet market. With the help of ASUS, they've created a very intriguing device. The Nexus 7 comes with a quad-core Tegra 3 processor, 1 gig of RAM, and your choice of 8 or 16 gigs of onboard storage. The display is a 7-inch backlit IPS display running at 1280 by 800 and a decent 216 pixels per inch. This is a bit lower than the iPad's Retina display, which has 264 pixels per inch, but well above the Kindle Fire's 169 pixels per inch. But enough about the specs. Let's find out what our teardown revealed. Can I just tell you how thrilled our teardown ninjas were that they didn't have to spend 45 minutes heat gunning off the display the way they did with the iPad 3? Let me show you something. Do you see these clips? These clips mean that all we needed were a set of plastic opening tools and a little bit of patience, and we were in. And that right there scores the Nexus 7 huge points in terms of repairability. One millimeter is the difference in thickness between the glued and nearly impossible to repair iPad and the Nexus 7 held together by retaining clips. One stinking millimeter is the difference between being able to open your device and service its internals and simply having to throw the device away once the battery dies. And I challenge anyone to be able to discern the difference a millimeter makes when holding the device in your bare hands. We're not all the princess and the pea here. One millimeter is not noticeable in day-to-day -day use. Once we were in, we were met with a familiar sight, the giant battery. <laughs> if you've opened enough tablets up, you probably saw this coming. The battery takes up most of the internals. And how easy is it to replace? Well, the Nexus 7 bests the iPad yet again in that this battery is super easy to replace. It's held down with a tiny bit of adhesive, and there aren't even any screws involved. It's as if Google wants you to be able to continue using your Nexus 7 long after the battery has died. Imagine that, a tablet that doesn't come with a built-in death clock. The sustainability geek inside of me wants to hug Google for this. Can you do that? Hug Google? The Nexus 7 comes with a 16 watt hour battery that can last just less than 10 hours. The Kindle Fire, by comparison, comes with a 16.28 watt hour battery that can last just less than 8 hours. Go figure. For further comparison, the Nexus 7's battery time falls just between the batteries for the 2012 iPad models, which last just less than 10 hours on HSDPA and 9.5 and hours on LTE. Except that the iPad's three batteries are significantly larger, coming in at 42.5 watt hours. One thing that separates the Nexus 7 from the pack is a 1.2 megapixel user facing camera and microphone, which means that the Nexus 7 can be used for video conferencing, such as Google Hangouts. But the lack of rear facing camera means that you won't be using this tablet to take pictures. Other features include the Broadcom GPS chip for use with navigation and map software, and the NFC chip for near field communications, which basically means that it can talk to other phones and payment terminals when tapped against them. On the downside, our biggest complaint is pretty common in the tablet market, and that's that the LCD is fused to the glass, which makes the cost of replacing shattered glass much higher because you actually have to replace the entire display assembly instead of just the glass. Additionally, there's no room to add storage with a memory card the way there is in the Nook and some other Android tablets. But to be fair, the Kindle Fire lacks that option as well. So finally, let's talk repairability. We score every gadget we tear down for repairability on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the easiest to repair and 1 being the most difficult to repair. The Nexus 7 scored a very respectable 7 out of 10 for the following reasons. The rear case is very easy to open and requires minimal prying effort with a plastic opening tool to remove. All fasteners inside are Phillips double zero screws. No security or proprietary screws here. Battery replacement can be accomplished without soldering or even a screwdriver. Many components, including the I.O. ports, can be replaced independently of the motherboard. 
On the con side, the LCD does not separate from the glass, increasing repair costs. That about wraps it up. If you want to see the complete teardown, including gorgeous high-resolution images and witty commentary, make sure you check the teardown out on our site, and we will link to it down in the description to make that easy. For all the latest teardowns and repair videos, make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel, or you can follow us on Twitter at iFixit and like us on Facebook. Thanks for watching, and happy repairing.